All right. Uh, I'm Chris Bloom. I'm the president of the Mid City Neighborhood Organization, and welcome all in attendance to our September general meeting. I know we're all we're kind of hastily preparing for another storm, but as that seems to be less of a threat, um, I wanted to go ahead with our, this meeting tonight and uh, have a shorter focus and wrap this all up uh, pretty quickly as we uh, as we move on to the rest of our preparations. Um, if you don't have a, a copy of the agenda, we had it posted on the event information and went out via email. I've put another copy to the link in the chat. So um, going down through our announcements for uh, MCNO, um, we're still looking for uh, interested parties and volunteers to help us with a pavement removal project on Uloa Street. We have a, a couple of grant funding resources for this project. It's not fully funding, funded from what I understand, but we have a uh, line of funding from Cleanup NOLA grant that needs to be expended by November, um, which is, a, I think, the new updated deadline for that project. So we're trying to move forward before the end of the year and try and get at least harsh, partial parts of that project complete um, to the point and ready that intersection for also landscaping. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that all at one time, or we'll probably have to phase this project uh, due to funding. But please uh, contact me if you're interested in participating. Um, president at mcno.org is my email address. I know anybody who um, would be willing to share some heavy equipment, especially for breaking up concrete or um, hauling or disposing of. So please let us know. I'm um, hoping to try and complete that, obviously at least a phase of it before uh, the end of November. So uh, also uh, been contacted by some citizens around the Bayou St. John area about uh, landscaping the post office location on Moss Street. Um, there's significant interest and approval has been given by administrators with the Postal Service to implement a project. Um, so that would probably entail about um, some definitely some cleanup and as well as plantings uh, of trees and ongoing maintenance for the next year. Uh, there's a rough budget of about fifteen thousand dollars for the scope of the project. There's a lot of overgrown and out of control invasive plants along the backside of the property um, which kind of obscures a lot of the view and for safety concerns they're wanting to try and get that removed um, so if you would like to be interested moving forward i'll have more information going forward um mary uh do, when's the planting season for soul do you know is that december Right, for planting in Mid-City right now, mm -hmm. uh, it turns out that we have not had the usual response that we do. So they're looking like November to December for planting. Okay, great. Well, hopefully we can work with Seoul with our Yule project around that time too. So hopefully yep. we get some funding. Yeah. If you give me the, the specific blocks, you know, I could start talking to Susanna, see if we can get some particular people out to look at that. That is just the intersection of Yoloa Street and uh, Scott. There's the Behavioral Health Services building is the one property that is um, signed up to have that pavement removed from the easement. Um, we're working with Urban Conservancy and um, that's the one business we have full uh, adoption and approval from. So. It'll probably be a phased implementation and do one corner at a time or, or however we need to. I know the um, the apartment building across the street from the behavioral health, I think, sold recently. So I don't know the new owner's interest, but they don't have the same over pavement problem in the easement. They have plans <clears throat> already on that side. I don't know. I think I, I couldn't catch that last part, Mary. It and start getting the paperwork going on that. Okay. 
Great. Thank you. All right. Um, also, we're planning a, uh, a Halloween decorated house tour map. Um, please, if you know anybody who is interested to be featured, we're trying to contact our previous porch crawl um, hosts. And, uh, oh, sorry. Um, oh, I don't know about the volunteers. I'm just seeing the question now. Um, it probably depends on, there's probably different levels. I mean, we could probably do under 21. I don't know if there's how much heavy equipment we're going to be using for um, that project. It may just need to be one or two people that are willing to handle, you know, air hammers and whatnot. Um, but there's obviously other work that can be done by, you know, people under 21. So um, then our, uh, sorry, our, we usually do a porch crawl fundraising event for MCNO every year in October. Um, unfortunately, you know, a lot of that requires participation from homeowners as well as bars and restaurants. And um, with all the guidelines for distancing, we've, we decided to go ahead and scratch the way that works this year. And we're currently trying to put something festive together for a self-guided tour through Mid-City of some of our previous hosts with uh, and anyone who uh, likes to decorate. So please contact uh, our board member, Lucy. Uh, her email is entered in the chat there. If you'd like to be featured or want to help plan any of these, uh, uh, this Halloween decoration house tour. Um, and then I want to thank our block captains and our participants in our Katrina 15 cleanup service days. Um, there were at least uh, 10 different projects that happened throughout the community uh, and 35 entries in our gift card drawing process. Uh, those were awarded on Friday. If you didn't see my awkward video on Facebook Live, you can go watch it there. Um, and we've, we've contacted pretty much everyone. Um, and we'll have some alternates if, if we can't reach everyone who submitted. But it was everything from donating to Lake Charles Relief, from trash cleanups to landscaping and beautification projects. So uh, I think it was all just a fantastic way to do what we could without uh, one large specific event day and uh probably a good model to to repeat regardless if we have to have distancing rules or not so i think it worked out really well all right um uh, so moving on um tonight we have uh two parties uh here to talk to us this evening um this meeting and next meeting uh is going to try and focus on elections if you notice in the um in the agenda, I included a lot of information and deadlines from the Secretary of State's website. I know Dorian just shared before the meeting that she just signed up to be a poll watcher. Um, there's also training and opportunities there. And it's also a very loaded docket this year on, on the ballot for November. And one of those things uh, coming up is an expiration to a dedicated millage for the library. So we've invited uh, Dr. Morley, the public library director, to speak on some of the information that was recently shared from the mayor's office and um, possible impacts and, and strategies moving forward for them. So, and Dr. Morley, are you there? Oh, okay. That was my intro. Yes, sir. I thought, uh, I thought Judy Russo might go in front of me. Well, I, I'll give you a, a little bit of a background because maybe everybody isn't uh, up to speed on, on what's happening. So the 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 library has two separate millages, and you you all may remember um, we have a, a general millage that lasted for about forty years. That's the one that expires next December, December thirty first, twenty twenty one. Uh, a couple of years ago, the library went out and asked taxpayers again, and they said, hey, look, we, we don't really have uh, the, the amount of money we thought we did. Uh, we built some new library since Katrina, so we, we got this supplemental millage. So those two millages totaled about 4.91 mils. 
Last year, the, the city uh, was reassessed. Some of you probably remember that. And, and in that reassessment, uh, the amount of mills we had generated too much money. So the city rolled back those millages. Uh, so our millages, uh, well, actually, our, our millages rolled back to 4.91. Uh, you know, previously they had been 5.82. So that's where we are uh, today. So this millage that expires next December, the, the city is, is hoping to include this in a package of renewals on a December 5th, 2020 uh, tax referendum. And what they're proposing is to rededicate some of this money. So in order to provide a tax cut to, to citizens, uh, what they want to do is say, uh-oh, am I still there? Yep, yeah, okay. Uh, what we want to do is, is rededicate some of this money from the library and put it into street and traffic control devices, uh, put some into neighborhood housing, put some into economic development, uh, and a little bit for uh, roads and sewers as well. Uh, so if you're you're following along, the the library has a a eleven and a half million dollar uh, fund balance. Uh, we accumulated a lot of that money right after the supplemental millage was passed. Uh, we didn't have the ability to spend the money as quickly as we had hoped, and so that that money amassed in a, a fund balance. So that fund balance gives us an opportunity uh, to to spread out some of these potential losses if the uh, the millage passes in the fall. And so uh, to to try and be a little clearer what will happen or what, what you're going to see on the ballot uh, on December 5th is a, an effort to roll back the, the general millage from 2.58 mils to 0 0.987 mils. And so uh, that will end up being a, a reduction of, of about uh, Six and a half million dollars, six million dollars or so, depending on the collection rate. Uh, and then we're also going to allocate 1.5 million of that money to early childhood education efforts. And the early childhood education efforts are, are really a, a, an opportunity to plow money into early literacy, to get into some of the, the early childhood care centers, to get some consultants in who can really help uh, boost the, the third grade reading levels. Uh, if you are not aware, uh, I think just under 40% uh, of, of third graders in the state can read at, at grade level. So it's really a, 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 an effort that's worthwhile. Uh, so what does this mean for the library? Well, like I said, I mean, we're taking a, a funding cut or a revenue cut, uh, but we also have this fund balance that will allow us to uh, to to get through the next three to four years, uh, and really our mandate is to to not close any branches, uh, not have uh, any significant layoffs. Uh, uh, we don't really want to reduce hours, uh, and we don't think we'll we'll have to. You know, our natural attrition rate is probably about ten percent per year, and so we can use that uh, in addition to some some operational efficiencies. Uh, that will really won't be noticeable uh, by the public. You know, we can cut back on on you know attending a few meetings. We can cut back on some marketing dollars. All things that that don't directly affect the patron. Um, so you know, part of this too, whether we we had the the funding reduction or not, the the library was looking at ways that it, it could evolve and and become more tech savvy. And uh, some examples of that, if you if you are uh, not a, a big library user as we've installed self-check machines uh, at every library. Uh, we are using a, a, a predictive analytics program that helps us purchase materials in a much more targeted way so we can focus our dollars where they're most needed, really try to drive down the, the wait time for the more popular books. Uh, we've dedicated a lot more money to e-resources. We've seen a, a huge uptick uh, especially since COVID, uh, in the number of people who are downloading ebooks, e audios, uh, the, the streaming DVDs. And so we, we anticipate that will continue now that people have become accustomed to it. So we have a, a lot of opportunities to, uh, to, to sort of uh, redirect some of our efforts, you know, without sacrificing the, the, the traditional 
uh, history of the library. We can capitalize on, on some of these technological efficiencies and drive our costs down and, and not really have a, a very significant impact on what's happening to the public. Uh, you mentioned, too, in, in, in your email, you know, the, the Mid-City Library is, is one of the only ones we don't own. We rent that facility from a, an individual, uh, but the, the cost of the rent is not really exorbitant. I mean, I, I don't think that's going to be a factor in, in our decision moving forward. You know, the, the real cost for the library, I mean, our, our personnel cost always hovers around 70%. Uh, and, you know, we just we have to have people to cover the hours at 15 different branches. And, and that takes up a significant expense for us. Um, but, you know, like I said, I mean, we uh, through some efficiencies and, and through some attrition, you know, we should be OK with with no layoffs, no closures, no reduced hours at any facilities. And I'm sure this conversation will continue to the, the library board ultimately is going to decide. Uh, the best use of the the fund balance, how quickly we might want to spin that down, or how quickly or or not quickly we might want to spread it out. Uh, we know we have some some bigger things that that we're looking at. We don't have a permanent home uh, over in the ninth ward, and and you know we'd really like to uh, have our own space over there where we could grow and and offer the. Uh, computer and internet access and, and access to materials that people are really asking for. Uh, so you know, a lot of changes. Uh, some of them would have would have happened without the uh, the, the tax referendum. Um, I, I should say too, because you'll you'll see when you get to the the ballot, it's a, a weird uh, question. You, you're being asked to reduce the millage rate to 0 0.987. So clearly, if you vote no then we still have one more year of the existing millage rate, uh, that 2.58 mils. And I suspect, uh, you know, we don't have any definitive answers at this point, but I suspect uh, the city will want to, you know, go out and have some other kind of election um, between now and December 2021 if that measure fails in December of this year. Well, that wasn't very clear, but uh, you have to wait six months in between elections. So if if the the measure is rejected on December fifth, twenty twenty, you know we have to wait six months before we can go back to voters to see about extending or um, renewing that that millage again. So you know the the alternative, if you're a voter and you're thinking about this, is to approve the the nine eight seven point nine eight seven. Uh, and, and keep the library flowing for, uh, you know, a, a little while or either reject it. And then we have a, a pretty big question mark. We've got to figure out, you know, what we want to do as a, a city to uh, try and, and find some money there. Yeah, thank you for all that clarification. And, I mean, I know this was, in looking at the meetings and whatnot, this, this was also identified even before COVID as, the cost savings for residents for property taxes as requested by the city council, correct? Yeah, this is definitely a tax cut. I mean, it's a, you know, and like I said, I mean, if you look at the priorities of the city, you know, I mean, it's hard to argue about streets and drainage, especially, you know, on the eve of a, a potential hurricane. And, uh, you know, I know that's a priority for them you know, getting the economic development piece up and running, you know, that's going to be a critical component as we try and emerge from, from some of this COVID stuff. And so, you know, we're all working together to, to make it happen and do what we can for the city. Now we have a comment question. Uh, is there an expectation that this referendum is going to pass or do we know of any sort of um, uh, survey of what voters might think of this right now? No, uh, we don't have any of that information, you know, at this point. I mean, uh, I know that the city is, is bullish on it. You know, the city council's bullish. And um, so, you know, it, uh, uh, voter apathy is one of the big things that all of us have been concerned about, you know, especially as we get into December. If, if COVID stays uh, like it is and if we continue to remain in phase two, you know, that puts a lot of pressure on people for another couple of months. And there may be some 
either voter fatigue, COVID fatigue, or just plain old fashioned, you know, I don't want to pay any taxes mm-hmm. fatigue. So uh, right. Uh, we just That's don't have point. any. Yeah, oh, sorry, I don't have any of that information. I mean, the city may have done some some uh, you know surveys or or polling, but but they haven't shared it with us. And I, I forget to mention this. This is on the December fifth ballot. So also speaking of those points of voter apathy, this is not even going to be on the long list of ballot measures in November. This will likely be during a, the probably probably a district attorney runoff election. Um, and as we've seen, sometimes a lot of runoffs cannot be as well attended as the primaries are or open primaries are. Yeah, and, and truly, I mean, the national conversation may be turned on its head at that point too as a result of that November election. Now, you're talking about some programming with early childhood education. Is Does that open the library to seek grant funding for any programming? Yeah, we're not sure, you know, exactly how it's going to work. Part of that money will go to the Office of Youth and Families. And so Mm -hmm. they are going to take the lead on that and use us as a conduit. Uh, And I suspect, you know, they're going to want to use some of that money to add additional seats for children that don't have access to early childhood education now. And, uh, you know, we just haven't plotted all that out as we've dealt with some of these other things. Yeah, still a lot in the in the works. Um, you don't happen to know any more details about the, is it called the city front door offices uh, that are pilot programs? Oh, well, we're, we're running one of those uh, pilot programs. I think part of this, this whole effort is, is for them to create um, uh, a front door, quote unquote, for people who want to start a business, who need to get permits for something and, and sort of have a one stop location. It, it sounds like from the conversations we've had that the, all of these different things are disparate and, you know, you've got to go to one place here and then another place here. And, and the goal of the Office of Business and External Services is to try and get those in one place. Mm-hmm. So part of what we're doing at the library is saying, well, look, we've got locations throughout the city. Potentially, you could send city workers to some of the library meeting rooms on specific days and times and then allow citizens to, to come and do whatever city business they need at the library in their community without having to go downtown, pay to park, do those kinds of things. And so we are going to pilot uh, that kind of project at the Keller Library uh, starting in October. And then we will try to roll it out at East New Orleans. Uh, And, you know, part of this is a a pilot to see if there's enough demand for these kinds of services and what they might look like and, and truly if they need to pivot. You know, if people come in and say, well, you know, we don't need a business permit. What we need is X, Y, Z. Then the city will have that information and can make those changes. Yeah, understandable. Um, and, but this was in the works, obviously, prior uh, under the reorganization of Business and External Services Office, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this has been a long, ongoing project for them. Mm-hmm. And it seems like they're wanting there, we all know the kind of the status of City Hall and so some of the motivations to maybe move some of the services out of that building. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, do we have any other questions or comments for Dr. Morley? Um, the board meets monthly for the library, correct? No, they meet every other month. Every other so month. They, they met last week, so they will meet again in November. Gotcha. All right. We will definitely be sharing that information. Uh, and I know people are very concerned, uh, a lot of concerned citizens. A lot of comments were shared during the two, uh, the council meeting and, and the subcommittee meeting. So um, information is probably best as long as we can give people the right, the correct information. So, um, sure. yeah. Thank you so much for, for speaking everyone. I really appreciate it.
Uh, and uh, thank you for your time. We'll hopefully talk to you soon. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you, too. All right. Uh, that's all we had for Dr. Morley. Um, the only other person who is going to be presenting this evening is uh, Council Member Chiarusa. So you just joined up. How you doing? Hey. How are you, Chris? Good to see you. Doing well. Good. Nice to see everybody. Um, I guess, uh, I don't know if Stephen's already addressed this, but uh, obviously everybody continues to watch what's happening with Sally. Uh, looks like a little bit of a further jog to the east. Um, of course, the reports keep on showing that it's intensifying, unfortunately, much like Laura did before it made landfall. The, the one thing I heard today on our 10 o'clock call um, with the mayor and all the departments uh, of note was that sewage and water board had actually pumped the canals lower than they had at other previous points. So that's good news. And I know that DPW was out cleaning up um, catch basins and other parts of the city today uh, because I got a, a complaint from a constituent this morning. I, I flipped it to DPW and two hours later it was taken care of. So, um, you know, credit to the city for doing that. Uh, specifically, uh, Chris asked me to keep on, um, you know, keeping in mind the issue with Haifa. Um, obviously, uh, we 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 want to continue to track that um, because I know code enforcement and NOPD had been out there, but there were still some continued complaints I was getting from one individual. I contacted on my own um, the state alcohol um, tobacco commission commissioner um, and uh, they went out twice one time was a couple weeks ago now and found a number of violations and from the email that I forwarded to Chris I think I can say politely um, they weren't very happy with what they saw with how the establishment was being run and the fact that they pulled back and it seemed like violations continued to happen and issued some um, citations that night. And then subsequently ATC went back, um, I think just a few days ago, and, and at least that night did not find any violations. But what I would just ask is this, um, and, and, and this is almost on any topic, is we don't get 5-2 water complaints or 3-1-1 complaints or 9-1-1 complaints. And so I see, you know, a lot of people on this call who we know well and who have interacted with our office. I would just ask this. If, if there's something that's going on with Haifa or Pothole or Hagen Lafitte or whatever it may be, please do not assume that we know about it. And please absolutely feel free to email or call us about it because um, if it's a pressing issue for you, we want it to be a pressing issue for us. And frankly, um, you know, the people who are on this call are the eyes and ears of the neighborhood, and we want to make sure that we're hearing from you. Um, uh, you know, on, on a different note, unless anybody has a Haifa specific question, um, one of the things I've asked Claire to really start working on some more is some zoning issues um, that are affecting the city and, uh, you know, things that I think this neighborhood in particular, in light of the Jesuit Bridge, um, would, would like to see more of. And um, one of those that are being filed this Thursday is we're going we're gonna to introduce an ordinance to reduce the fees that, that need to be filed for homeowners who want a conditional use on their own property. And, and, and so, um, you know, Claire sent me the numbers today and the reductions that, that our office is proposing and now Council Member Banks has signed off on is pretty staggering. I mean, the, the difference, I think, for initially was like a home was just basically blank to X amount of feet and it was almost $1,500. Now, the first um, wave of of maybe adding on an additional room is only two hundred fifty or five hundred dollars. So some of those fees we've been able to cut in half or even more depending on the size. And I just think that's important because if we're going to talk about entry and not having delay of process, the cost of doing something is extraordinarily important. And then I, I see Mary on here. 
Um, you know, Mary, one of the things we're going to also do is, is we're working with the administration on a notice provision because I think that's one of the other things um, that, that gets residents frustrated and makes me feel whipsawed is when there is a zoning determination that, that safety and permits makes and the neighbors uh, aren't happy about, then they turn to the council member and want that, want that fixed. And so what we just want is a, um, a robust system for, for notification and then be a very clearly delineated process for what appeals would look like on whatever that, that notice is. So if you're the applicant and you get denied, this is what the process looks like. And if you're the applicant and your permit is accepted, then this is what it looks like for people who want to be able to appeal. And so I, I thought that was really important. And the other one that we're going to work on is in the administration, to its credit, had already started working on this, is a new encroachments policy. So that way it, it'd be very clear about um, the types of encroachments and sort of what needs to be done. And, and um, I, think, I think it's important to maybe spell the rules out a little bit more clearly. So um, that, you know, There'll be more zoning things, but that's sort of a preview of what we have going on. And then the last one for me is this, um, you know, Sewage and Water Board, we, we obviously continue to get bills from people all over our district. Um, you know, Steven's with us on all the phone calls, and so far there's only been one neighborhood association that's told us they haven't really been affected by, by bills, but um, yeah, I consider them an outlier and, and one of the neighborhood groups um, to say that neighbors you, um, we spent a lot of time with that one on Saturday. And so that continues to remain a priority for us um, as well as the power for sewage and water board too. And so, um, you know, obviously with this hurricane approaching, we want to make sure going forward that all of us for the residents first and then for also for policymakers that there's some more peace of mind about having a stronger and more redundant power. And so that's that's the other thing we're gonna be focused on um, on our meeting. I think our public works meeting will likely move from, I think it was either the 24th or the 25th to the 29th. And that's when we'll take up those issues. And the other thing we'll take up at the public works meeting um, is the FEMA program to show um, all the FEMA work that's going on throughout the city uh, or through District A uh, as well. And, and I really feel like um, people sometimes forget, uh, myself included, um, how much is being done. And I think it's just a nice reminder from 2018 through the present and, and through the end of this year and beginning of next, what is slated to happen and what's going on. Uh, so that's it for me. I know that's, I covered a lot of ground, um, but I, I wanted to be complete. And if anybody has any questions or anything else, I'm, I'm happy to answer. Any inquiries? Yeah, we got a couple of comments before the meeting that I forwarded to you, um, but nothing's come in uh, in the chat or or since we started the meeting. Um, is there any other city council updates? Uh, or some recent votes you wanted to touch on? Yeah, so um, I, I guess you know a couple of things are obviously. Um, uh, uh, we know about the millage issue. I heard that was alluded to sort of right before. Um, and I'm gonna let Steven sort of speak for the mayor on on where they are with that. I, I will say this, um, you know, we obviously had conversations with the administration before all of that happened. Remember back in 1986, part of the way that these millages were constructed was sort of this holistic approach to government and how we deal with um, really economic development. And so that meant better streets and, and um, improved um, uh, helping with blight and trying to make sure that New Orleans in 1986 was, was digging out of uh, the oil and gas industry and doing something different. And I think to a certain extent, some of those things remain the same, but some have clearly pivoted from that, right? And so, um, uh, you know, uh, we're getting ready, as I just said, to do all this FEMA work and bond issuance work. Uh, right now, the city only spends about $8 million on operations and maintenance dedicated to its streets through millages. Um, 
and and I, I thought it was important that there be more. So this this heightens that aspect of it. Um, obviously, um, early childhood has become something that is that has become a, a more of a discussion and touch point than before. Um, you know, I do think there, that one of the things we need to talk about more is pivoting away from a tourism economy and how do we train people. Um, for this new economy that we're in and so um, that makes sense to spend money on and and while well, again, I'll let Stephen talk more about the nuts and bolts of, of the administration's decision One thing I would just remind people is at, at a certain point the library had almost five or six mills through its two separate millages which was roughly like 20 million dollars all by itself and um, I am a fan of the library my kids use the library I have nothing against libraries, but when you know we we keep, we don't fund probation really for juveniles in any meaningful way. When our streets are in bad shape, when we know we have sewage and water board problems, it's it's kind of hard to say the libraries could continue to have um, such a high output relative to other departments. I see, I got a um, couple of chats. Um, so on on the renewable portfolio standard. Um, oh, before I get to that, very quickly, the two questions Chris sent me before, one was about HIFA, I've addressed that. The other one was about whether or not we could put names of um, the businesses on the on the side of contractors who are cutting um, grass. You know, I mean, I, I think we can, we can look at that. I think the real point there is twofold. One is, um, the mayor says this all the time, if you see something, say something. And you know, frequently people get upset about the grass being blown. I, I will tell you that um, one time I was driving down Harrison Avenue and I saw the city contractor blowing grass into the catch basin and I had a conniption fit and called the head of park and parkways about it. So you know, we need to know, and I think you know, the city needs to prosecute that as well. Um, movement on the renewable portfolio standard, it's not on hold right now. We're still moving forward with that. Um, you know, uh, I'm not sure if we're still in the comment period per se, but um, that is that I know that's something that's extraordinarily important to us and to my colleagues, and we want to make sure that um, we're, we're doing it and we're getting it right. Um, and then one of the questions is Will these provisions for appeals and input apply to the proposed pedestrianization of the French Quarter? Um, I don't know the answer to that because what we're asking for with notice and appeals is a permitting process. And frankly and candidly, I'm not sure what's going to happen um, with the French Quarter and if, the, if that is sort of a matter that involves the police powers of the city or whether or not it involves permitting. Um, but certainly permitting is involved. Um, there are there are steps that can be taken in advance. I think we just want to make sure that those are clear um, and can't be done. And then, Chris, can I say one more thing um, that hasn't been asked that's been on my mind? Um, you know, with budget season approaching, I have not forgotten forgotten about STR and STR enforcement. Um, one of the things we did when the new OBS director was hired was send them a list of our our biggest and most egregious offenders, and we continue to follow up on that. But in the budget process and before and when we meet with the administration, I'm gonna to continue to reiterate that um, for my mid-city and my Faubourg, St. John, and some of my uptown neighbors, but particularly I would say the first two neighborhoods, that, that short-term rental enforcement remains a very big issue. And, um, you know, we want it taken care of with, with the appropriate allocated money. So those are, those are, I feel like, the big things. But again, if there's anybody else who has something else, um, I'm happy to answer that. And I um, hope everybody's batting down the hatches and, and stays safe throughout the storm. Great. Last call for any comments or questions for the council member? No? No? Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, do you know any, uh, maybe more of a question for Stephen, the mayor's office. So budget season and what those listening sessions might look like um, that we typically have for budget season for public yeah. input. Yeah, Chris, we, we really haven't gotten anything um, updated on that. Um, I'll, I'll, 
I'll reach back and, and get uh, get perspective on that for you as soon as possible. Okay, great. All right. Um, now, Stephen Musgrove with uh, Neighborhood Engagement. Did you have any uh, announcements or things you wanted to touch on? Yeah, Thank yeah just, just a few things. Uh, just to riff off of Dr. Morley and, and Councilman Jeruso, um, and, and as it relates to funding for the libraries, I hope uh, both gentlemen, um, and, and, and particularly Dr. Morley with the, with the full presentation or full explanation of um, what's happening with, with funding in the library. I hope it's clear that uh, the administration is not uh, indicating a deprioritization of library services, uh, the education uh, foundation that it, that it can provide or supplement uh, for our citizens. Um, it is the process that the administration and, and its partners with the council is engaged in is basically a, a rethinking of uh, needs and the funding that's available to um, uh, 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 solve, you know, improve uh, whatever needs to be improved, whether it's streets or, or funding for economic development, uh, training, things of that sort. So uh, it's really reflective of two things. One, the mayor and the administration's focus on quality of life um, and, 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 and a city improving in its uh, function and its ability to, to provide the basics, uh, such as uh, drainage, as the councilman uh, indicated, such as um, uh, better streets, uh, things of that sort. Uh, and so, so it, it reflects an awareness and a desire to improve in the, the city's standing in these quality of life um, areas. Uh, and, and then um, identify, then once you, you, you identify your goals and your, your vision, so to speak, you try to figure out how to execute that. And, ex and funding is a key you know, uh, component of execution. And that's why over the last few couple of years, um, the administration started off with fair share uh, action. Um, and a lot of that money, it, again, is for quality of life issues, infrastructure in particular, uh, including um, uh, 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 resources um, from STRs, which is a part of that deal, of course, uh, to uh, finance catch basin cleaning um, at a faster rate, not only to do so, but to, at a faster rate where there are more repetitions uh, for those cleanings, so things of that sort. So it's a rethinking, um, a lot of smart people involved, uh, in, including our councilmen and the council. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and so it's, it, it has nothing to do with a deprioritization of the library and services um, uh, being, being compromised. Um, it's just, again, what are our needs? Where are the funding sources? And where, where, where are those funding sources now? And where should they be? Um, in the future to propel us um, in a resourced way. Vision without resources uh, is irrelevant. Resources without vision uh, is irrelevant as well. So um, I, I think, I think uh, Dr. Morley did a, a fine job of, of kind of outlining um, what, what the deal is, right? Um, and and I, as I share with some folks, at first blush, when you know the communication came out, or or, or and all that, it did seem that uh, you know there was some there's going to be some funding loss. Last thing I want to say um, about the library uh, funding is 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 and, and Dr. Morley kind of touched upon it. The key is that um, they they do have this surplus, and best practices indicate that uh, a library system uh, should ha should not only could have but should have a surplus that is significantly lower. And so that's, that's, that's a key fact because uh, the administration and, and, and all the stakeholders are telling them, please use uh, uh, the surplus as you do your own internal revisioning along with partners and stakeholders about what the library will look like. So um, just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the library funding and, and how it fits with um, uh, the city city's goals and and funding sources. Um, other than that, just you know, Hurricane uh, Sally is gonna it's gonna uh, hit the Gulf Coast. It is it is uh, jolting to the east. 
Um, the only thing I want to say there is uh, if, if you're finding flooding in, in the neighborhood, call 911. So that's just a friendly reminder. Um, and, and, the, and the cameras will, uh, will click on and, and, and first responders, particularly if it's a, it's a dangerous level uh, or if it's caused a problem. But if, you know, you're, y'all are all smart people. Do you know what, what flooding could be particularly dangerous? Um, not only to property, but to, but to, but to life. So if that, if that arises um, in our experience over the next day and a half, two days, uh, dial 911. And uh, just want to remind you all about that. Um, COVID, of course, we, we remain in, in phase two. Um, I just want to encourage everyone to, to continue to be responsible. Please be patient. I think it's a, our approach is, is really about doing the hard things now so that our recovery can be um, more robust and long term. And I think all of us, as we grew up, our parents said, you know, study hard now and, 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 and you'll have years of, uh, of uh, 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 you know, the return is better. So be patient, keep doing the, the right things. And we appreciate everything that citizens have done. Uh, New Orleans have, for the most part, uh, responded well to the, to the request of um, uh, the city. Um, in terms of the COVID-19 meals program, I did want to mention that that, um, that FEMA has approved that program uh, another month to October 2nd. Um, it was, FEMA was a little slow in approving month number three. And, uh, and so for a little while, about two weeks, the city was uh, funding that program just to keep it going. But if, if you know anyone who's food insecure, um, have them call 311 and get into the program and, uh, and go from there. So. And, and just to note, the, the, the approvals are a month-to-month -month, um, uh, process. So if it always seems that FEMA's, you know, um, that the city's uh, program is under review by FEMA, that's why. Um, what else? Census. Yes. So the deadline is uh, September 30th. Uh, it was October 31st, but the federal government pushed it up. Um, and this is the critical time to get not only more people, but, but people who are uh, typically the last to respond, oftentimes the people who will benefit from the resources uh, that, that federal allocations uh, provide. So this is, this is the best time as, as everyone is ramping up uh, the communication, the push for people to respond. Um, I, I certainly ask uh, MidCity uh, to, to once again uh, keep pushing, keep it top of mind, and encourage people to participate. Um, you may have noticed uh, that, that our council districts are, are experiencing a friendly competition. Uh, the administration, uh, uh, particularly neighborhood engagement, we asked the council members and, and staffs to, to push it and to express uh, a community, um, uh, you know, just friendly competition among the districts. And District A continues to be in the lead. Um, we're the LSU of this experience, but there's an Alabama in District E right behind us. Uh, so. Uh, keep it up, and uh, we would like to. Now, in those discussions before we had the, um, uh, uh, before we 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 encouraged uh, the council to to create this competition, I, I had this bright idea of maybe the winning district would get some type of financial uh, reward, but then we realized very quickly that we had no money for that, so uh, so we 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 dismissed that idea. But um, that's all I had. Uh, oh, one last thing, Chris, I got a call. Uh, towards the tail end of last week from Kevin Murphy at Jesuit. And, and there, he's got a whole bunch of students who want to do um, service hour cleanups. And so I did recommend to him that uh, he reach out to, to you and I could, I could connect him to, to other um, neighborhoods uh, in the area. And hopefully he will do that. So, um, but if you wanted to reach out to him as well, feel free to do that. So that's all I have. I thank you for, you, for the time. All right, All right. All right. All right. item five and on the check specifically for Mr. Mushrooms. You know, I see a, I see a question. Uh, will the city publicize what what these funds taken from the li library will be used for? Um, absolutely. Um, uh, of course, we do know there's you know there's some target areas, right? So infrastructure drainage, uh, economic development, things of that sort. But, uh, but that'll flesh out um, more in the upcoming weeks. And, and of course, by the time we vote on it, it'll be much, much clearer.
Chris, would you mind if I added on to a question I put in the chat? No, yeah, go right ahead. Okay, um, and thanks, um, Council Member, for quickly answering that for me. Um, I just based off, I don't know who wrote that other question about um, publicizing what the additional funds would be used for. Um, you know, based on this new information today, it makes total sense, you know, um, that reallocation might be a prudent thing to do based on the needs of the city um, with regard to the library. Um, one thing just as a voter that is attractive to me about the library's proposal is that it's a little bit clearer about what those funds are going to be used for. Um, and, you know, early education and they have, a, you know, a pilot program that they're getting ready to put together um, versus hearing from the city, oh, it's for infrastructure, oh, it's for stuff that needs to be, you know, and it's very vague in comparison. Um, and I don't think that's because there aren't actual concrete real things that need to be done. Um, but I think that that, just from my perspective or, you know, as a voter, it would be really helpful to have something a little bit more concrete to look at and in terms of like resilient and green infrastructure um you know that's not really clear um so just something okay. to think about just to clarify sure. you know my point there sure no totally understand to totally understand that um and uh there's a working group uh and and i can certainly uh relay that feedback to um the internal working group so thank you That's a great point, because um, yeah, in that proposal, a lot of that uh, a significant amount of funding for economic development fund, that is definitely a great area how that is allocated to be expended, so. All right, um, I didn't want, I saw some comments from the council member. I didn't want to glance over Complete Streets program. Um, we get a, you know, we, I think Joe probably has heard this a lot from City Park neighborhood and Parkview combined, um, and especially with the Slow Streets program, I know Stephen was involved um, with a lot of the feedback from the community there. Um, do we know anything more about that program, or there's going to be some some working groups there now? Um, yes, with those neighborhoods. Yes, so um, we are working on revising the Complete Streets Ordinance. I think Claire. Um, shot the latest draft to the administration. The biggest changes are going to be that one, um, that there has to be a, a public meeting before there's a major operational change, I think was the wording in the ordinance. So, you know, that's in response to Marconi, let's just be honest about it, and, mm -hmm. and so that people know. And two, the way the Complete Streets Ordinance read in the past was that, um, groups such as the Regional Planning Commission or the Downtown Development District or, or other major sort of infrastructure um, organizations were a part of this, but the neighborhood associations were not. So we're, we have revised it to add that the neighborhood association that is affected um, is, is, you know, is, is part of that discussion. So, um, you know, my hope is that that goes a long way to quelling some nerves. And I think Stephen will agree on this point that um, we're not always gonna agree, but when there's early communication and a feeling like something isn't a fait accompli, and I see Chris shaking his head there, that it, it, the, the result ends up being better because people feel like they're heard on the front end. And even when changes are made, it, it, it feels more collaborative. So that's the point of what we're doing. I will tell you also, Chris, that um, there, there is an effort I put in the comments by the Moss Street neighbors on the Faubourg St. John side of the bayou to do really what I would consider to be just some slowing measures. They really just want some signage primarily and some striping and some signs. Um, it's, it's hardly much to get worked up about, but I think I think what should happen is there needs to be a good discussion with both sides of the bayou, a comfort level that goes there, and then seeing how it feels going forward. So that's that's where we are. Yeah, and that seems to be a challenge on, you know, the desires of one side of Moss versus the impacts of the other side um, and where they can meet in the middle. And uh, we That's why they have, pay me the big bucks. I know. We just have a very small portion of that. But... Uh, <laughs> will get dragged in for sure um, in one way or another. Um, 
you know, I, I imagine, Stephen, you got a lot of positive feedback on, on the Slow Street pilot program on Moss, especially during the early phases when the weather was nice uh, yep. and not excruciatingly hot. But uh, There was, there was. And, um, you know, and, 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 and to fully disclose, you know, there, there were opponents um, who perhaps questioned uh, the validity of, of the, uh, of the, of the market research. Um, but, uh, I think sometimes, I mean, I, I just think in that slow streets effort, there was some conflation, um, with, with, um, you know, road dieting, lane dieting, um, uh, maybe some other things that might happen on Moss street. Um, and, uh, and that's understandable. You know, we all work through, um, issues, uh, providing information and try to, help people understand what's what's going on um anything that codifies the process i think i think councilman's uh, complete streets work with the department of public works um is only going to help things uh, you know you create a process uh especially for community engagement and, and i think that's going to be a big help and i mean we've run into this with many sorts of projects nobody wants to read about it in the paper to find out about it first you know, they'd rather be engaged at the fairly early stages rather than finding out, finding out about it when they feel like they're powerless to make any sort of impact or change to something they don't agree with or it impacts them negatively. So, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. And I think that's a little bit of a organizational cultural shift too, um, with, with departments, right? Um, sometimes departments just want to do things, um, and, and they sometimes are risk averse uh, to engaging the community, not realizing that um, you know a lot of times the 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 the, um, the community can can really help. Uh, and at the very least, there's there's some understanding of of the cities or or the state for that matter, uh, what they have to do if explained to people prior. So, yep. Great. Well. Um... Yeah, the, anything else anybody else wanted to touch on? Um, we're right about in an hour this evening, so uh, we can start to wrap things up. Um, if you didn't see beforehand, I have included in the in the notes about uh, deadlines for uh, registering to vote, also um, early voting. Uh, times uh you know i've had a, a difficulty in uh, getting a list of our polling locations in mid-city um i've contacted the clerk of courts website i haven't gotten any information um you know we had wanted to do some outreach in providing some refreshments to poll workers especially during that august election and um i know most of them are inside in air conditioned like a Pierre Capdu and uh, uh, I forget what it's called now. And then also uh, those are the only two polling locations that I knew of. And then the fire station down the street from me on Jeff Davis, I know is, is basically an open garage and an air conditioned. I was wanting to know if we could, someone could help with providing those locations. Yeah, Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, well, um, we've had to change a couple of the polling locations. So we now have an intimate relationship with the clerk's office. So I'm happy to email um, Janine Aubrey, who's our contact, and um, and ask her. Now, Chris, let me let me in fairness ask this question. MCNO is both districts A and B, so you'd want to know for for the entire Mid City area where the correct. Is. Yeah. Okay. We we can do that. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, happy to do it. Awesome. Um, I believe there's still resources available. Uh, we have a uh, a website page dedicated to becoming a poll worker. There's also a demand for poll watchers um, and training available for such activities for the upcoming elections. And uh, we'll be focusing not so much on the next month's meeting, not so much the, um, the candidates themselves, but some of the platforms and community groups that have organized to come up with some of their own platforms, including the uh, 
the People's DA Coalition, um, and we're going to be promoting a lot of other candidate forums that exist. Uh, we've hosted a few forums in the past. Most of those have been city council and state representative look uh, focused. Hold on, let me get this copied correctly. Um, this is a forum coming up to focus on the DA's race. Uh, and they'll be also presenting at our next month's meeting. Um, their candidate forum, I believe, is going to be probably on their Facebook page. Uh, September 23rd at 6.30. Um, that's one well-publicized DA forum that I'm aware of. Um, and then also, uh, we've been in contact with Court Watch NOLA that hopefully they'll be coming to present at our next month's meeting to talk about some of the judgeship races and uh, things to be expected for the upcoming November election. I hope to get all this information out to people before they go to vote, but I realize that our next meeting is on the 12th which is sort of at the beginning of early voting period so um well so early voting starts on the 20th so we have some time but um yeah so i just want to promote that our next meeting uh probably going to still be doing google meet um it's going to be october 12th at 6 p.m um please stay please keep updated with uh, mid city security district they're continuing their online meetings as well. Uh, their information here is in the chat. Uh, see, I don't know about the People's DA Coalition. Um, I mean, you don't need to have an account, I believe, to stream any of the videos that they would be hosting. Um, so if that's a, that's a problem, uh, they do have a website. Let's see. And I believe they said there's going to be another candidate forum for DA uh, uh, after our October 12th meeting that will help to promote as well. So we'll be sending out this information. Um, and uh, sorry, where did I leave off? Security District, I believe they're scheduled to have their regular meeting this coming Wednesday. So please uh, follow their website. They usually promote it um, on their uh, beforehand. Um, there are some non-PAC meetings that are starting to be rescheduled. Uh, I attended third district's non-PAC meeting, which is at the beginning of the month. So we will be sharing that information as soon as uh, first or third district. Uh, third district did a virtual meeting. Um, I believe, I haven't heard of anything from the first. Um, Jim Molson, and the commanders from those uh, NOPD districts always send us their newsletter to resubmit. So please look for that information. All right. Um, if there's nothing else, I think that's uh, going to wrap it up for this evening. Thank everybody for their engagement. Um, look for this meeting. Um, I know some people joined late. We'll be posting this on our website and uh, on Facebook for anybody to rewatch uh, any parts of the meeting that they need to. So thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, Chris.